Hello, this is Cody with Sneaky Kitty Game Dev here, and what I want to do is show you how to use if to find. Now, if you recall from the previous videos of this series, we are going to be using this to basically help secure our game. So this is going to not really prevent cheating, but it's going to make it difficult for people that are reversing the game to see what certain logic does on the server. So basically what we're going to do is set it up so when our third person character spawns, I want to print out a message to the log that only gets shown on the server. I want that code to be compiled out completely on the client. So that way we'll see the log on the servers, but we won't see it when the client loads up. So what I want to do for the sake of this is I actually want to delete the third person character because otherwise this will just show the log twice and I don't want to be you know confused. So let's do that and save it. And then let's head over and open up our provided character. So the header in .cpp and I want to override begin play. So let's create that, create its definition, and here we want to wrap our stuff. So let's print out the message first. So UV log, log temp, warning, text. Uh, this is running on the server. And a lot of exclamations. Make it easier to see. Okay, now how do we make this run on the server? Well, first let's actually make sure that it prints. So I'm going to go ahead and recompile really fast. Then once I'm back here, what I always like to do is enable live coding. And there we go. So let's go ahead and load up the example map, go to the output log, and just hit play. So this is running on the server. Not really a surprise. We can kind of assume so because we're not wrapping in anything. So let's go ahead and wrap it in an if defined. So what we want to check is if UE server. And then we have to wrap, or I guess you could say close the wrap in an end if. So basically, if this is the server, basically the compiler, or the, sorry, the compile type or build tree that we're using, then we want to compile this logic. If it is not, like let's say we're building out for the client, which was that Windows no editor, this will not appear. This is not going to be compiled out at all. So once we have this, I'm going to go ahead, control F11, just to go ahead and quickly compile it again and build this out. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I have the server selected. So I'm just going to build out the server just like we did in the previous videos. So let's get that set up. Okay, now let's go ahead and do the client. So we're going to change the build target and go ahead and package it on out. Okay, now we have both the client and the server built out. So first things first, let's go ahead and run our server. So Let's get that launched up and good to go. There it is. Now let's go to our client, and I want to launch this with a log. So we're going to do the exact same thing we did with the server. Create a shortcut, open the properties, and just append hyphen log to the end. So now we can launch this, and there we go. So we are now connected. Let me shrink this up. Of course, it's going to let me. Come on. All right, whatever, we'll just move it. So here is the clients. As you can see, nothing has been printed, but here's the servers. This is running on the server and in the log for the client. That log is nowhere to be found. So even if we, I don't know, can you search? Yes, you can. So let's search for this is running and nothing. So as you can see, that has actually been completely compiled out of the client. So we know that is not going to exist. If someone, let's say this was a string that was going to our web API somewhere and we wanted to keep it away from the client. So this is something that only the server accessed. So that only the server needed to know it. This is something that we would wrap in this. So basically we wanted to keep it away from the client, but the server needs to know about it. We wrap it in this, we're good to go. The client can't reverse it and find, you know, go through Ida and list or go through the list of all of our strings and say, oh, well, here's the URL. Let's see what all we can, you know, do with it. Even though most likely nothing, they can't really do much, but just little things like that. So I'll be giving some more examples in future videos. This is just more or less a basic to hopefully try to get you to grasp it. So this is kind of like the logic behind it. And you can do the reverse of this as well. So for example, this will mean this is running on the client. 
So this will actually compile the logic outside of the server. So that way the server doesn't receive it, but the client does. Now this could be useful for certain things. Like if you wanted to have a function, like let's say you call an RPC, that RPC then runs on the server that is set to call back the function that you just called it from. So like uh, reloading, you call a reload function, you check it for the server. If you're not, you make an RPC call to the server. The server then calls the reload function. So it runs on the server. There might be certain steps or certain things that you want to not run on the server for the sake of performance reasons for whatever. Again, this is all just examples, hypothetical, that you want to not run on the server. Well, you could just wrap it like this. And then that code will run on the client, but not the server. So hopefully that kind of inspires you to think or get some ideas in your head about where this can be used and applied. But if not, like I said, in a couple of videos, I'll try to be incorporating some of this and just giving some more examples. And I'll specifically be focusing on RPCs because I feel like that's just the uh, a better general use case for this, just for the sake of understanding. Anyways. That is going to be all for this video. If you like what I'm doing and you want to help support me, you can find a link to my Patreon in the description below. And if you have any questions or anything like that, feel free to join my Discord. That's also linked down below, and I'll try to help you out. So I'll see you in the next video.